when your slow internet connection makes your computer look slow. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been answering questions and dealing with slow and fast computers since 2003. So this one kind of surprises people that they've got this wonderful machine that is very, very high powered, lots of RAM, lots of CPU, all the good stuff. And to them, it's still very slow. And it's actually an interesting reflection of exactly how our world has changed, how we're using technology different these days. Uh, it's, it's a fundamental difference, and a lot of people don't quite understand exactly where that line is. Let's talk about that. We are doing more and more online than ever before. It's more than just email. Email's always pretty much been online. But in a lot of ways, in the past, we used to download it to our computers, deal with an email program there more and more because people have so many different devices. They're treating their email as a single thing up in, quote unquote, the cloud. Online email has always been online. It's always been in the cloud. The cloud is just a fancy buzzword for it these days. But the bottom line is that we're actually using, instead of dedicated email programs to deal with our email on our computer, we're using web browsers that then reach out to the internet and deal with our email online. For example, even though all of my email comes from domains like my personal domain or askleo.com, I'm actually dealing with it all via Gmail. I do it all in the gmail.com web interface, which means it's happening online. The same is true these days for a lot of document manipulation and creation. We're doing things with Microsoft Office online, which is free. We're doing things with Google Docs, which is online and free. There are other alternative solutions or other services that are all online and free. Even cloud storage services like OneDrive and Dropbox have web interfaces that allow you to use them without needing a PC at all. A lot of what's happening with these online services is happening more and more, not on our computer, but online. Now, the other thing that has changed fairly dramatically in recent years is how we're consuming video. So much of what we watch on our TVs, on our computers, on our mobile devices is now streaming video. And yes, while your computer needs to have a certain amount of capability to do that, it's actually all coming down a single pipe. And that's where the confusion lies. For example, when you're watching a YouTube video, say like this one, and it starts to stutter or pause, or start and stop. Is it your computer or is it something else? And that something else is usually your internet connection. It's hard to diagnose, it really is, but one good rule of thumb is that if it's a single website you're having a problem with, say like a YouTube video, and you go and watch a video using some other service, be it Vimeo or streaming something on Netflix or whatever, and those are all working fine, well, maybe it's not your internet speed. Maybe it is just that website having a problem. Uh, if all of those sites are having problems giving you the video at the speed you need, at the quality you want, or if the websites you visit are all just uniformly kind of slow and pokey, well, that may be your internet connection or your computer. Facebook is a great example of one that blurs the line even further. What I have noticed and I have experienced myself when visiting Facebook in my web browser is that it is doing a lot. I mean, it is just doing so much in the web browser. It's not necessarily communicating a lot online. It cert to certainly to a certain degree it is, but it actually is one of the sites that places the heaviest burden on the browser and on your computer. So Facebook being slow could be your computer's not up to the task, your browser's not up to the task, your internet connection is too slow, or Facebook themselves are having problems, which is also happening from time to time, particularly as they do their various UI revamps. It's incredibly difficult to tell.
One of the best things you can do to help diagnose the problem at your end is try different browsers, try different sources of the information that you're looking for. If one site or service comes in acceptably and another does not on the same computer, it's probably the site. Uh, try a different computer. And of course, try somebody else's internet connection to see if their internet connection is able to handle what it is you're trying to do. Another problem that makes this even more confusing is that your computer and your internet may be up to the task for what you're doing on your computer, but you've probably got a lot more than your computer connected to your internet connection. As an extreme example, I have something like 25 different devices connected to my internet connection. They're all sharing that one connection. There's multiple computers, there's, there's streaming devices, there's Internet of Things things. Um, they're all online and they're all periodically reaching out to the internet and consuming just a little bit of the internet connection. Now, of course, if all of a sudden, say, three computers all try and stream something at the same time, well, that's obvious, right? They're all competing and they're all sharing for this limited resource, and it's very possible that all three of them will suffer bad performance. But more interestingly is when you've got a lot of different devices all doing things on schedules that you don't know and perhaps can't even find out, they could be downloading updates, they could be doing random things, all impacting your internet speed. All of that all of that, be it the number of applications you're running on your PC that are using the internet, the number of other computers in your home that are all using the internet, and the number of other devices in your home that are all using the internet, they can all conspire to basically use too much, to need too much, and it could end up looking like your computer is slow when it's not your computer at all that's at fault. It's your internet connection. So one of the things I strongly recommend that if you experience what you think is slowness in your computer, if you can identify it as being say, hey, it's only when I'm running in the browser, it's only when I'm visiting websites. Well, that's a clue that your internet connection may be to blame. Try and turn off or disconnect all of the other devices that might be sharing the internet at the same time and see if the problem remains. Now. The fundamental problem with this problem is that it can't be solved. You can't make your internet connection faster. One of the frustrations that I see is that a lot of internet providers are advertising the fastest Wi-Fi. The problem with the fastest Wi-Fi is it's great. It's wonderful to have fast Wi-Fi, but it doesn't make your internet speed any faster. And that's what I pay my ISP for. Their job is to provide me internet to my house. After that, yeah, Wi-Fi can make computer to computer communications faster. It can maybe have a little bit of an impact on the overall experience. But when it comes down to it, the limiting factor for what you do online is not the speed of your Wi-Fi. It's the speed of your internet connection. And that is not something you can change, at least not by making some tweaks to your computers or even tweaks to your routers. So the best thing you can do is to reduce the number of devices trying to use the internet at the same time. Reduce the number of programs trying to use the internet at the same time. All of that will hopefully free up more of that constraining resource for the computer you're trying to use for the jobs you're trying to do that presumably are more important than all of the other things that you've been able to disconnect. Now, I said you can't make it faster, but of course you may be able to. The problem here is that you can't do it for free. And in fact, you may not, still may not be able to depending on your ISP. You can, in most cases, pay your ISP more per month for a faster connection. I know that that's an option I have here. I'm happy with where I'm at right now, but if I need more speed, I can give my ISP more money every month and they'll turn up the speed of my connection. That's not always possible. Every connection has an upper limit. There's only so fast that a connection can go. If you're in that position 
where you've maximized the amount of data that can travel across your specific internet connection, your only alternative is, well, <laughs> to look for alternatives, to see if there are other ISPs that service your location that might be able to use different technology to provide you with higher speeds. If there aren't any, yes, then you are out of luck. That's the fastest you're going to get. And the only thing you can do is to manage your internet usage by the number of devices connected to your internet and the number of programs running on those devices, all trying to use the internet at the same time. But like I said, it's not that your computer is slow. Your computer may very well be up to the task. It only appears slow because your internet connection isn't giving you as much as you actually need to do what you're trying to do. For the original article on which this video is based, for updates, for comments, for related links, the whole nine yards, visit askleo.com slash 126435. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We release new videos throughout the week, and hopefully you'll find them interesting and helpful. And by subscribing and by liking this video, you're actually making it easier for other people to find the answers they're looking for when they're searching on YouTube. As always, thanks for being here, and I will see you again soon. Take care.